Marcus Bronzy here from Trek Culture. Now, say what you want about Star Trek Discovery. There's one character that stood out like no other, and that is Captain Christopher Pike. Now, although it's not yet been confirmed that the next live action series will feature the adventures of the Enterprise under Pike, Alex Kurtzman has been quoted saying, The fans have been heard. I don't know why I said it like that. That's not how he sounds. But we're going to roll with it. Now, those fans, me included, are presumably the ones who have been crying out for Mount's portrayal of Pike to get his own show, as he absolutely dominated the second season of Star Trek Discovery. He had nut beat gravitas, that sexy silver comb over, and his clean shaven federation -ness. No one flexed it like him. So, in doing this, he's brought a Pike themed installment of the franchise a little closer to the bright and optimistic future that Roddenberry investigated way back in the cage. If, no, 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 not if, positive thinking, when we get this installment, what is it that we need to see from a new series starring Pike? With plenty of options to pick from, let's break down some of the things that we hope from here at Trek Culture. And also feel free to comment with anything that you think we may have missed, what should be in the mix. I'm Marcus Bronzy, and this is Trek Culture, and here's six things to expect in an upcoming Pike prequel series. Number six, Pike dealing with his fate. Now, we know from his trip to Bereth that Christopher Pike's fate is sealed, and he's going in that chair, which looks a little bit like one of those portable home steam cover things. It does, trust me. Anyway, it was established back in the original series episode, The Menagerie, where seemingly out of nowhere, Spock kidnaps the crippled Admiral Pike and locks the Enterprise on course with Talos IV, the only planet where visitation still carries the death penalty in the 23rd century. Let's think about that. The Federation is in full effect and there's a planet that you get killed for if you go to. If you go to this planet, you die. And this is a federation that has no money. They just want scientific progression. They want positive, they want to spread positivity in the universe. But if you go somewhere, you die. So now that Discovery has cemented that ending in canon, will a new series show Pike trying to fight his fate at all? On Borath, he accepts it for the good of the mission. But when the adrenaline cools off and he has time to reflect, will he be content to end up as the crippled man on the chair? Remember, this iteration of Pike has no idea that Spock will try to bring him back to the Talosians, so he's facing a dark future. The series could explore this certainty of the future and show him dealing with the repercussions and also how it affects his command style and relationships. A captain that knows how his life is gonna end is a different captain to one full of optimism. Interesting. Number five, a handover to the young Kirk. If Star Trek Discovery proved anything, it's that recasting can work out very, very well. Ethan Peck's Spock was a delight, capturing the cold logic of Nimoy, whilst also updating him for a modern world. Could the same not be true of a younger James Kirk? Aside from further solidifying the expanded Star Trek universe that Kurtzman and co were working on with Discovery and Star Trek Picard, it would open the door to explore a young Kirk's career before taking command of the Enterprise. There are loads of stories here that are open to tell. His time on the Farragut was skipped in the J.J. Abrams reboots, understandably due to the restraints, but this could be something that could be explored in greater detail. With the room to expand and the modern budget to accommodate, introducing a new version of this old character could breathe some new life into his whole story. Number four, Spock and Pike's romance. The pair that we see in season two of Discovery are certainly close, but this is a much younger Spock. He's left Starfleet to pursue his obsession with the Red Angel, an emotional reaction to his logic nonetheless. He will later do everything he can to bring peace and happiness to Pike's later years, but what we need to see in between this is the development of their friendship. What did they go through together? What would turn the logical Vulcan to feel this kind of loyalty? In the great history of Trek, Spock and Kirk along with McCoy have always been a great pairing, but it's Pike for whom Spock almost ruins his career. What did they go through together for this to happen? What would turn the logical Vulcan to feel this kind of loyalty? Well. Pike speaks about his respect and admiration for Spock when we meet him in Discovery, but assuming any Pike series is set after the end of this season, there are still a number of years to go before Kirk takes command. Ethan Peck and Anson Mount have fantastic chemistry on screen together. This leaves room for many stories to tell in which the two of them can further develop their camaraderie. Let's not waste it, man. Let's use this. Number three, 
old faces. One of the surprises of Star Trek Discovery was the reintroduction of the Talosians after so many years. Their big old veiny heads have had a little CGI polish to fit the current aesthetic, but they are still very much reminiscent of their 60s origin. Plus, they help Spock and Burnham further their quest. Also reintroduced is the beautiful Vina, played by Melissa George in Discovery. Likewise, her 60s style is a throwback to the years gone by. If Pike's ultimate fate is to spend his final years on Talos IV with her, it stands to reason there could be more of a relationship, more drama, and more longing here. All they have to do is show it to us. Quick digression, there is another old face who's yet to appear in any live action versions, but one who has already received the name check in Discovery, Captain Robert April. He was the intended first captain of the Enterprise, Barring an appearance in the animated series, he's never been portrayed in canon. Mm. Not only that, he was listed by Discovery's computer as one of the most highly respected captains in Starfleet. Is it time enough for him to enter the televised universe? And what better way to do that by potentially showing a young Pike serving under him on the Enterprise itself? Oh, it would be good to see what kind of adventures, what things they got up to, what shaped the Captain Pike that we get to see today. Number two, more Enterprise. Please, sir. Some more. Please, sir. Can I have some more? Please, sir. Can I have some? The Enterprise has for many years been the heart and soul of the various Star Trek iterations. While it has changed form many times, it is and has been home to many of Trek's greatest stories. More than that, it's been the flagship of the Federation for almost a century. So, any new Pike series would have ample opportunity to introduce many of the reasons for the ongoing legacy of this Enterprise. It is arguably just another ship when it's met in Discovery, despite the reputation of her captain. She proves herself in battle against Control. She returns home for a refit and takes off into space again. So, we could use the time afforded by a new series to go on new adventures, make new discoveries and explore strange new world. Okay, let's, you saw where I was going with that. Back in the 23rd century though, Pike as captain of the Enterprise has the best opportunity to expand Starfleet in friendship, meeting many races for the first time. Kind of similar to Enterprise, yes, but with the lessons learned from that show, any Pike series would be in a strong position to move forward. Number one, familiar faces. Along with Pike, Spock and number one, there are other faces in canon that could potentially appear. T'Pol, by the final season of Enterprise, had become one of the stronger characters on the show, and her study of the Kishara was taking her in a new direction. Jalene Blaylock has not appeared at many conventions or given many interviews about her time on the show, but her character was such an integral part of the founding of the Federation that it would be an excellent chance to revisit her story, thanks to her Vulcan-gifted, long-ass lifespan. How old is she again? Likewise, there are many opportunities in any new series to join the many iterations of Trek together. But when all is said and done, the chemistry of Anson Mount, Ethan Peck and Rebecca Romain was so instant, so palpable, so juicy, that just getting more opportunities to see three of them in action together on the bridge of the Enterprise would take the show into a new direction that could give us seasons upon seasons upon seasons of episodes to devour. Just to clarify, the show is yet to be confirmed, but if the fans have been heard, that's you and I. It's hopefully just a matter of time. There you go, six things to expect in an up and coming Pike prequel series, if it ever happens. Hello, it's a bearded Marcus Bronzy here from What Culture slash Trek Culture. Uh, just a quick heads up to say during these unprecedented times, we're gonna be doing our best to make sure that you get awesome content. In fact, I don't think we're gonna be slowing down at all all. Uh, I notice a lot of the What Culture gang have been sharing what their setups are, so I guess I'll, I'll show you a bit of that if you want. Here we go. That's the laptop that I work from. Ooh. This is a recording desk that we've got set up. I'm in a bedroom at the moment. Insider! Insider! Got Ribena over here. Oh, I love a Ribena. So let me pop you back up. Here, so uh, I've noticed all the guys have showed you stuff that they have. Uh, that's My setup's pretty minimal. Uh, this is something that's pretty cool. These are some glasses which apparently filter through some of the lights which can give you a headache if you sit at a computer for a very long time. I do sit at a computer for a very long time looking at a screen. And I also like to do marathon gaming sessions. So um, sometimes you'll see me with these on. They're not prescription at all. Um, and I also think they make me look a little bit less stupid. So yeah, we're not slowing down here at Trek Culture at all. We still have loads of great articles that you'll see up at whatculture.com. Uh, thank you to, for Chris, who's also in the mix with a stack of great videos. Um, obviously myself and Adam Cleary, 
Uh, we've got lots more on the way for you as well. I'm sure we're gonna be fighting over a few Easter eggs here and there to pop out. Uh, also make sure you check out his Picard Ups and Downs season finale. That's a great video to watch and all the other videos before that as well. Got my own podcast, How To Kill An Hour, where we look for new ways to kill time. It's less trekky, more techy, but we've got, had great guests on there like the guys from Top Gear and Big Zoo who's just done a TV show with Jimmy Carr. It's, it's great, so yeah, feel free to check that out. That's what I'm up to. Twitter as well, at uh, Trek Culture. Chris is throwing up some cracking memes for videos and loads of Trek based stuff and um, I'm up on there as well getting involved and we're not slowing down with content at all for you um, and yeah as usual let us know in the comments let us know what you want to see chat to us on Twitter because uh, yeah if you get involved it helps us create awesome content for you uh, in the meantime uh, live long and prosper I've been Marcus Bronzy and I'll see you on the next video bless <laughs>